Yep. All right, let's start with our prelude then. I think so. We'll go through the whole thing twice. How's that? of extravagant welcome and we welcome the Reverend Dr. Diane Weibel, our UCC conference minister here to our pulpit today. We're so grateful that you're with us. Thank you. Uh, so it's a, the, we are, uh, we are the East County Shared Ministry and we love to say no, no matter, matter who you are, are or where you are on life's journey, journey you, you are, are welcome, welcome here. here. We're so grateful that you all are here. Our land acknowledgement, as we recognize um, the lands on which we work, serve, and play upon, let us remember the first inhabitants of these lands that were held by Bay Miwok, Tachiyokuts, and Ohlone peoples for generations. This month in October, we're gonna be learning about the Ainu people um, of the Northern Islands of Japan. And they're from these, primarily inhabit these red islands that you see up here north, closer to Kamchatka sometimes than Japan itself. They're an indigenous people who primarily inhabit the land of Hokkaido in Japan, but also live north of Honshu, Japan's main island, and Sakhalin Island of Russia. There are more than 24,000 Ainu in Japan. While there are no official census figures, the high Hokkaido government conducts surveys of Ainu living conditions in many years. And according to the latest survey, the population is at least around 20,000. Only a very small number of Ainu remain fluent in their traditional language, which the UNESCO recognizes as critically endangered. Um, the origins of the Ainu people itself, as well as their language, are subject to contestation. While various hypotheses have been put forward, some proposing the Ainu are linked to Mongolians, others are suggesting the Ainu are Caucasian, they are probably an isolated Paleo-Asiatic people with no direct relations, a possibility which is partially supported by the classification of their language as a language isolate, meaning that like Basque, it does not appear to be related to any other living language. Isn't that interesting? Aspects of traditional Ainu culture, which have now almost completely disappeared, were unique. After puberty, women were given distinctive tattoos, such as around their mouths and wrists, while men never shaved after a certain age. Both typically wore earrings. Ainu were traditionally animists, believing that all things were endowed with a spirit or God. The Ainu lived closely entwined with nature, their livelihoods relying on hunting, gathering, and fishing. Today, their lifestyles 
are widely integrated into Japanese society, but many have sought in different ways to recover their lost culture and tradition. So th we will continue learning more about this uh, uh, fascinating people that are really at risk these days. Uh, the announcements came in an email and looked like this. Um, next Sunday is going to be Blessing of the Animal Sunday, so we encourage you to either bring your pet. Um, I don't have an intern or a co-pastor that will bless snakes or spiders, so you might want to just bring a picture of animals that don't play well with others. Um, cats especially get stressed out during a service like this. So. Uh, unless you have one that's really well socialized and doesn't mind being around other animals, I would probably just bring a picture of your cats. But um, we'll try to have a dog side and other side, and that's always a fun Sunday. Lacey Hunter, uh, one of our UCC colleagues, is getting installed at the, uh, the Alameda Church, right? Um, and that's later this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And it will be live streamed at that uh, FCCAlameda.org link if you want to do that. We have some birthdays, Serenity Diggs, Kendall Landstrom, and the Kendorf's anniversary. I don't think any of them are with us, but we can sing to Kendall in Oklahoma. How's that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. To you. I, I love this picture that um, Elaine found. My teacher told me not to worry about spelling because in the future there will be autocorrect. And for that, I am eternally grapefruit. Uh, nice. Good, good one. I like that. She finds great things. In fact, our latest newsletter that just came out on yesterday on the 1st is an amazing document with great um, catch up with a lot of our friends and life's going on. So please take a look at that. The other way that we connect with each other midweek is our social hour that starts uh, Wednesdays at four o'clock on Zoom. And this enables us to be in contact with the church at home as well as those that are able to get out and about. But we will have fellowship after the the service today, and I think there's even some Coca-Cola over there if you're a soda person. We're taking a little break from our study until October 11th, where we're going to start a new book by Jennifer Harvey called Dear White Christians. We're going to be reading up through the introduction on this. So I think it's page 15 in the printed books, but you may want to uh, read the foreword and the introduction and all of that, and then we'll uh, decide how we want to divide the the readings up because they're pretty long chapters. So we'll probably just do one chapter a week. And uh, I don't see Debbie here, but um, we are doing our denominational offerings today and next week. And um, you'll hear a little bit more about them, I'm sure, during our service. Uh, but Neighbors in Need and the Presbyterian Peacemaking offerings are what we take uh, in this season, and we invite you to give generously through both of our denominational offerings and we um, and I think that's it for announcements any other announcements out there yes I still have the church directory with me today if you didn't take a look at it last week please see me during fellowship because I will accept no criticism if you haven't taken a look at it <laughs> It's resetting. All right. Dr. Diane, please lead us on with our lighting of the peace candle. I am so glad to be here with you on this Sunday. As you begin to think about and consider the Ainu people of Japan, um, some of you may remember that I lived there for 12 years and lived in the northern part of Honshu. And at one point, our um, our missionaries in southern Japan were um, talking about the injustices being done to the Baraku people. And we said, well, you know, what, a, what is the kind of justice work we can do um, for people in northern Japan who are experiencing the same kind of oppression? And they said, oh, everyone in northern Japan experiences that oppression and brought up the Ainu people and everything that they have been through. So, um, 
as we think about lighting this peace candle, as we think about the, the peoples in the world, including the Ainu people, as well as so many people in so many places who are in need of that kind of deep peace and that love and that strength and need us to be neighbors, um, I, I invite us to now look towards lighting this candle. Oh God, may we embrace your call to offer peace to a broken world. Be with us as we work for a world where all are safe, none are targeted, and all are included in the circle of community. We invoke Christ's peace, a peace that transforms hatred into love, stops violence, heals alienation, and blesses the lost. Help us to open our hearts to your peace so we may be peacemakers in your name. May there be peace on earth. Amen. Amen. These things never... Please rise in body or spirit to join me for the call to worship. In the midst of a world where people hunger and thirst, come, come worship, worship God, God who feeds the hungry. In the midst of a world where people are abused and oppressed, come, come worship a God who calls for, for compassion, compassion and, and justice. justice. In the midst of a world filled with wars and rumors of war, Come worship a God who desires peace for the world. In the midst of a world where love is not freely shown and forgiveness is hard to find. Come worship a God whose grace and love know no end. Now is the darkness. 
has vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. and the haughty, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly, give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water, for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. and our bones. Please join me as we pray together. We will sit down where feet tire from the journey. We will sit down where grief bends the back. We will sit down under roofs wrecked by artillery. We will sit down where cries sound from cracked walls. We will sit down where heat beats like hammers. We will sit down where flesh shivers in cold. We will sit down where bread bakes on thin charcoal. We will sit down where there is no grain in baked fields. We will sit down with those who dwell in ashes. We will sit down in shadow and in light. We will sit down making friends out of strangers. We will sit down, our cup filled with new wine. We will sit down and let love flow like language. We will sit down where speech needs no words. We will sit together at the table with no edges. We will share one loaf in Christ's name in one world. May that be so. Let us sing this Jewish prayer, that that may be so.
of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace peace draw the circle wide draw it wider still let this be our song no one stands alone standing side by side Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide. Draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Amen. All right, our prayer families this week are Peter Tedeschi and Joan and Ken Schmidt. And Ken hurt his hand, is that what we heard? Yeah, so prayers for Ken this week. Um, and also First Samoan Congregational UCC in San Francisco and First Presbyterian Church in Alameda as we rotate our prayers for our conference and our presbytery. Let me uh, check in with the church at home real quick. We have Ann and the Schmitz. Welcome. We can hear you now. Do any of you have a joy or concern to share? Well, we're, we, I guess a joy that Ken's um, hand injury wasn't any worse than it was. It looked pretty gory, but there's no, no damage to bone or tendon. So, so we're good. All right. Good to see you. Lord, in your mercy. He's got it wrapped up. He's, he's showing us on this, the screen there. Anyone else from the church at home want to share anything today? All righty. Then here, what joys and concerns do we bring with us today? Continued prayers for my young cousin, 18, 19 years old, who had a thyroid storm, and she's uh, home now, but still in serious condition with her liver. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Um, prayers for my former mother-in-law and my cousin Melissa's aunt, 
who was just diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer and may only have weeks to live. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Bill and Barbara. They lost their sister. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Sherry and Chris Persing are, are on a cruise and a long vacation, and Sherry got diagnosed with COVID. Oh, no. I know, on the cruise, they're isolating and staying apart and staying away from people and wearing masks, and so hopefully Chris doesn't get it and they come home healthier than they are right now. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Yeah. Prayers for the Hayes side of my family. My uh, niece was being induced uh, yesterday uh, prematurely. She went into, her water broke uh, early, so they postponed it as long as they could. So just prayers for their health. And the safety. Yes, and the baby will be in NICU for a while. And then her grandfather, <laughs> um, will we just learned, will be buried in Arlington on um, October 27th. Um, and then my family is also celebrating a memorial for um, an uncle on my dad's side that Saturday. So it's kind of a busy time. And these two men represent the last of that generation on both sides of our family. Mm. So. We're just going through a lot right now. We'll walk it with you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Keep Betty Panky in your prayers as she goes through therapy after her fall. Betty Panky, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayers. All right, so things are going well. Um, for me right now, and um, I pray that they continue to do so. Um, I just had my second infusion um, for my UC, and things look like they are really smoothing out. Um, you know, I have, you know, with the continued blood test and stuff like that, there's no signs of TB, and um, I just pray that things still run, continue to run smoothly, and Internship is going well. NAMI is going pretty well, and everything else is going well. I'm slowly starting to open. I think God is slowly opening up what I should be doing. Great news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we consider all the needs, those that we know of, those that we share here uh, every Sunday, and even those that we see on our television screen, especially as natural disasters come through Florida and South Carolina and other places. We pray that you would continue to walk with us as people and remind us that we belong to each other as we see the response to the hurricane and people digging out, as we, receive, as we see heroic acts of people helping others and helping save even pets. Oh God, we pray that you would continue to inspire us and remind us that we are one people, despite the divisions that we have in our political and social lives. Remind us that we have a common destiny as well, and that as we care for each other, we can create a new kind of common destiny with and for each other that can be something that lives into this world in a different way than we're seeing even now. As we see many of our institutions strained under the pressure of outside forces, as we see international conflict continue to rear its ugly head. Even as we see nuclear threats being used, oh God, help us have a, a calm place, a center in our own hearts where we know that we exist in your love and that it really is your love as that picture of, of your, your being that comes from the scriptures, that Shema Israel, listen up the people of Israel. Let us hear these words from God. Let us be the people of God. Let us be reminded that we belong to each other and that we all exist within the createdness of life 
which is your love. So even as we see natural disasters within that sphere, help us be the answer to other people's prayers and help us be the people you've called us to be, even in times of tension and strife such as these. And continue to inspire us as we pray this radical prayer that we receive from your son in new words as we pray. O God of sky and earth, we reverence your presence, both within us and beyond. May what we eat sustain us in the way of compassionate sharing. Help us to be forgiving, forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. Liberate us from guilt, that learning from our mistakes, we may move beyond self-centeredness to that depth of being in which we are one with all things. This way of love, peace, and justice is for all the earth and for all living creatures, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for this song. Let us talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, hopes abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, hopes abound. Christ is able to make us one, at the table he sets the tone. Teaching people to live to bless, love in word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, holds abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, holds abound. Jesus calls us and sends us out. Bearing fruit in a world of doubt Gives us love to tell, bread to share God Emmanuel everywhere Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, holds the bound Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again Pass the word around, holds the bound Please be seated. Our scripture reading is from Mark chapter 10 from Wilda Gaffney's translation. Some testing him asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. This next section, next section is one of my favorite passages. Now the people were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was angry and said to them, let the little children come to me, do not prevent them, 
for it is to such as these that the realm of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the reign of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Amen. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Good morning. It's such a joy to worship with you, especially to worship with you on this Worldwide Communion Sunday and be able to sing some of my favorite communion hymns throughout worship and to be able to celebrate table together on this day. I'm grateful for the opportunity to worship with you one more time as conference minister and to be able to bring this word today. I thank you for all the ways that you support the ministry of the wider church through your gifts to our church's wider mission, through your participation in so many ways in finding those places where we can connect together to do God's work in, the, in our communities, in our country, in the world around us. So thank you for all that you do. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you grew up in my generation, you probably had a song running through your head since seeing the title of this morning's sermon, What's Love Got to Do With It? Pastor Will asked me if I wanted to sing it, and I told him that you didn't want me to sing it, so I won't do that. But in particular, I want to read some of the lyrics to the song. What's love got to do with it? What's love but a sweet old-fashioned notion? What's love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? So I get that this song is about romantic love and passion and two people meeting and being attracted to one another and then obviously something going wrong. But on this day, this World Communion Sunday, we join with our siblings around the world to share in this sacred meal and I believe to think about what this meal is preparing us to do, what it's calling us to be about. I want to contend for our prompting this morning that this song is not just about romantic love, but it has everything to do with us as Christians as we seek to live lives that make a difference in the world around us, as we seek to listen to how God is calling us and do all we can to answer that call in the most faithful way possible. What's love got to do with it? everything. And who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? We do. We all do. Because the truth is, when we truly love, and when we make it our goal in life to love, our hearts may be broken. And it can hurt. And we wonder why we're doing it, and how we can possibly keep on doing it. Our hearts can be broken because we love and because we give of ourselves. And that is something that is so life transforming that I'm not sure we can expect or want to have it any other way. This passage from Mark is a hard one. It's been used in so many ways to harm people. It's been used to try to contend that marriage is only for a man and a woman. It has been used to argue that divorce is a sin and remarriage after divorce is even worse. It has been used to set up strict laws about right and wrong in such a way that love and grace are pushed aside. In the wake of the end of Roe v. Wade, we all know 
the kind of rhetoric people are saying, and we have heard the many ways that this scripture is being used as a, we as a weapon against people who want to live their basic human rights as human beings. When I read what Jesus says about divorce in Mark's passage this morning, and then I read what he says about inviting the little children to come to him, I am so grateful that these two passages are actually together in our lectionary reading. I am bolstered in my belief by the writing of theologian Charles Campbell when he says, at the heart of this text, is the disruptive work of God in Jesus Christ, which overturns patriarchal marital relationships and elevates those at the bottom of the social ladder, children, into models of entering the kingdom. The disruptive work of Jesus Christ. I love that. I want to be about the disruptive work of Jesus Christ. While a child in our culture might be deeply valued and put first in our priorities, in the time of Jesus, a child was lowest on the priority list. So for Jesus to follow his words about divorce with an imperative to receive the reign of God like a child, one who is considered the least important in the societal narrative, he is saying something really important about love and heartbreak and where our priorities should be, and most of all, about grace. Charles Campbell said something else really important about this text. He says, Jesus reminds the disciples that one enters the realm of God only by receiving it in complete dependence on God. One does not enter the kingdom through the fulfillment of any abstract legal principles, including those related to divorce and remarriage. He says, only on the complete dependence on God. That's really hard for us, especially those of us living in the 21st century who, where we believe that we can just work harder and we can just make things work and everything will be fine. Even in our society that values children, one of the biggest insults is to tell someone trying hard to be an adult that they're acting like a child. We have a problem in our society just as when this text was written, there was a problem with priorities in that society. We all think the goal in life is to become the best and the greatest, the most important. We think we need the best job. We need to make the most money. We need to rise in the ranks to the top. We need to be seen as whatever we think society thinks we should be. A great American work ethic says that if we work hard enough, we can do anything. Besides the obvious that we just heard Jesus say, this is not what we're supposed to be about, there's a problem with this way of thinking. No one rises to the top alone. There are a host of people behind every single one of us who has helped us along the way. Teachers, parents, coworkers, colleagues, mentors, friends, relatives. We're all dependent on one another. We need each other. We're all dependent on God. And sadly, there are people in our society for which none of this is easy. Even if they have a host of people helping them, even if they work so hard to accomplish their goals, they're not given the same chance to succeed that others are given by their skin color, by their, their privilege in society, by where they were born, by who they were born to. These people need extra help support, love. They need someone who is willing to risk a broken heart in order to fight to build a society that lifts up all people regardless of wealth, regardless of skin color, regardless of sexual orientation, ethnicity, or gender, that creates a system where every single person has the ability to 
lean on those people around them who are helping them and has a chance to be all that they can be. The people who suffer the most from oppression in our society are the people that Jesus talks about. It is for these children of God, children of all ages, that we need to fight, that we need to speak out for against the narrative of society, that we need to do all that we can do to see that they have the same opportunities that have been given to us, that have been given to others. We support people through offerings. We talked this morning about neighbors in need and peacemaking offering. Both these offerings that you support as a congregation. These offerings will, are, are taken on World Communion Sunday for a reason. They're taken on World Communion Sunday and in the month of October to remind us, to remind us that we need to be part of a broader community helping others who need help the most. These offerings can go to small, I actually sit on a grant committee with the United Church of Christ, and just last week we met and we um, approved grants for $49,000 to about 12, 10, 10 or 12 different churches for small grants for things that they needed in order to be the hands and feet of Christ in their communities. They needed a little help to get there so that they could help others. They needed a little help to be peacemakers. They needed to be a little help to be neighbors to those in need. The truth about lo what love got to do with it is that without love, we cannot function. Without love for our neighbor, no matter who our neighbor is, without the love to help those who need a little help, we can't get anywhere. We can't find that transformational grace that we're all seeking to be about. We can't find those places that we can go out and serve if we don't first have love. It's simple. Anything that takes away the humanity of another individual affects all of us. And we need to find ways to help. Special offerings, marches, engagement in community work and justice endeavors, seeking to understand better the needs of our community, and then responding are just a few of the ways that we as people of faith find ways to show love. Yes, it's a heartbreaking world. Natural disasters, what's happened in Florida, what's happening in Ukraine, and those are just two this week. All of the pain that people are experiencing, sometimes it can feel overwhelming. And we think, how can we make a difference? And yet each one of us, embracing the love that is within us, embracing the love that has been given to us, that has been shown to us through God's love, is the way that we lean on it, we lean on God to do the work that needs to be done. When we hear about shootings in schools, when we hear about shootings of black and brown people at the hands of police, when we hear about injustice towards the Palestinian people, the effects of climate change, not just Florida, but Canada was last week, Alaska, when we hear about all the ways that people are being hurt, when we hear about the abu abuse of women, and not just the abuse of women at the hands of intimate partners, the abuse of women in Ukraine, and the abuse of women by our own justice system, legal system. When we hear about all of this and it surrounds us, we risk becoming numb and shutting down and saying it's too much and I'm going to turn the page on the news because I don't know what to do. And that's exactly the moment that we need to step up, that we need to remember that we have to keep fighting, that Jesus needs us to not give up. If Jesus' teaching in today's scripture and the realities of our world that surround us can meet in our minds and our hearts, I hope and pray that it wakes all of us up. I hope that it wakes me up. That if I start to feel numb, that I am reminded just how much work there is to do. 
and I fight off the numbness, and I show up. The two parts of our passage from Mark, the Pharisees attempt to trap him into answering a controversial question about divorce, and how Jesus decides to answer that along with the statement that follows, let the children come unto me, and whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child will never enter it. Both of these are an important message to all of us here this morning. Don't get so caught up in the rules and the regulations that we forget the care of the children, all of God's children. We need to trust God so much that we are still capable of getting angry in the face of injury and justice and pain. So angry that we will be able to shake off our numbness that threatens to settle in our hearts so that we can do something about it. Something about the heartbreak and the injustices of the world around us. I believe that numbness is a protection because our hearts cannot take another break. But that's not true. Our hearts can be broken. And when we're fully dependent on God, who will always be able to heal our broken hearts and send us out again to fight again, to keep going, to love and care for and fight for the children, children of God of all ages. When we can do that, we are reminded that the heartbreak will not stop us. Who is it that most needs our help? Who needs our love and our strength and our gifts and our offerings? What is it that we can do for those that society considers the least of these? What is it about our privilege and power that we can use not to get ahead or to become more successful in society's eyes, but to use it to get ahead and be more successful in terms of bringing equality and justice to everyone, the basic human rights that everyone needs? What can we do to make that happen? That's what Jesus is talking about. We can, ha we can be like the Pharisees and hide behind the rules and regulations that society has put in place. Or we can listen to Jesus about another way. So the lyrics of the song really do work. What's love got to do with it? And who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? We definitely do. Children get it. No one is more quick to tell you I love you than a child. We are called to be healers of broken hearts and broken lives. We're called to go out into the world and find all those places that need us the most and bring hope and light to all the dark places. So as we gather at this communion table on Worldwide Communion Sunday, ready to do all that God is calling us to do, we gather as the Northern California Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ. We gather as members of the Presbytery, and I am forgetting the name of the Bay Pres Area Presbytery, San Francisco Presbytery, to join our hearts together to make an impact an impact that goes beyond our local churches and even beyond our country. And we do all of this because Jesus has invited us in and will walk with us and journey with us wherever we go. Amen. You can see that both of our denominations are doing some important racial justice work and reparations work, both through um, what we heard about when uh, Reverend Dr. Teresa preached for us last, as well as uh, the, the example in our newsletter from the UCC denomination as well. So thank you. Let us prepare our hearts to come to this table. Join with sisters, 
sheltering in place and we cannot offer our gifts in person we ask that you send your offerings online or via snail mail to Murdell Dibdahl or Paul Fish whose addresses are in our announcements and e-blasts and now from within our homes we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and lives may our gifts be used to bring hope healing freedom and sustenance to those in need If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can help somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody how they're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain.
Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the tangible and intangible gifts you give us, and I accept these gifts from your children. We give you thanks for being able to give through these denominational offerings as well. Bless all of the gifts presented this morning, both in the pews and in the mail. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Can you hear me? There we go. So when we come to this table, we don't come to a Presbyterian or a UCC table. This is the table of our Lord. And as an ecumenical congregation, we don't put any bars on this table. This is Jesus's invitation. So if you feel called to partake in this sacrament, you are welcome to do so because we each come as children to this table. We each come as people in need to this table. And so as we partake of bread and juice, even that that comes in a little plastic cup, um, we encourage you to uh, take the time to find the, the, the clear plastic to liberate the wafer, which makes it a little easier <laughs> before you get to the juice. But there's two little toppings on that, and you may want to actually open things up so that you're prepared to participate in this sacrament as we come to this moment. And as we do so, we come with all of who we are, including our shortcomings, to a table of grace that redefines that grace, not as just the pieces that pick up the portions after we have done all that we can do, but undeserved mercy that each of us deserves. That's the irony of grace, right? Undeserved mercy that each of us deserves. And when we learn how to share that grace with each other, then we actually become a stronger community. And so this is a, lib a meal of liberation for all people. Yeah, we remember on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he was sitting at a table like this with his friends, his friends who came not because they had to, but because they wanted to. And we come today because we want to. We want to be at table with one another. We want to be w at table with all those around the world. And we remember that on that night, Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He gave thanks to you, God. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, perhaps at the end of that same meal, Jesus took a cup, perhaps the fourth cup of a Passover meal, with all of the hopes and dreams for the liberation of the people of God that they had at such a Passover meal. And he poured that last cup and he said, whenever you share this cup, let it be a little different than the previous ones. For when you share this cup with one another, you're doing so as a new sign of the kingdom among you that everyone gets access to this cup, everyone. Yeah. So now let us take the bread and in our many places receive the gift of God, the bread of life. We are one in Christ in the bread we share. These are, These are the, the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And then 
as we come to the cup, let us in our many places receive this gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are one, one in Christ, Christ in, in the, the cup, cup we, we share. share. Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving. O God, God, with with gratitude gratitude and praise, praise, you you have have blessed and fed us in this sacrament, sacrament, united us us with Christ, Christ, and and given given us hope in the face of turmoil, to remind us that in you everything is already all right. right. Make Make us children children of of remembrance. remembrance so that her story and his story lives on in us. Set us from this place with purpose and in your power, blessed, transformed, and bent toward the arc of justice for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup, one blessing, which we bless, and we. Thank 
for the fields, scattered and grown, gather to one for all, one bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing we we pass, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we have one body in this one Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us send each other forth with these words in your bulletin. We affirm that we are part of a wonderfully mysterious universe, that all life is interrelated in one vast web, that our role lies in nurturing all life and the planet itself, that human beings are genetically one family and of equal value. That, that every, every human, human being has, has the right to the basic necessities of life. That, that each of us is on an evolving spiritual journey. And that, that we are called, called to work to create a world of justice and peace, compassion and respect. Now, let us prepare to go out into a world where if we do what we're supposed to do, our hearts will be full, and at times our hearts will be broken, but we will be making the difference that God is calling us to make in the world. Shu yes, Christo no megumi, kami no ai, seire no majiwari ga ichido to tomo ni arimasu ni. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Will you come and follow me if I let call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you love the you? Touch and sound in you and you in me. Amen. 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 Join us for fellowship and we will see you Wednesday afternoon for social hour. All right. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs>